Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, we're happy to be here. I'm happy to have some elected uh, Weston Newton, Representative Senator Tom Davis, and there's the mayor right there, other gentlemen. Uh, happy to be here with you all, and I'll be, be brief because you've already told the whole story. <laughs> all right. But uh, we were, just to put this in context, Operation Warp Speed, when it was announced, and when the FDA gave the approval for the vaccines, the two different types to be delivered, there were about 57 million of them to go around the whole country to be scheduled out for nine or 10 or so weeks. And our share for 18 year olds and up per capita in South Carolina compared to the other states, some of the territories, DC and some other jurisdictions was about one and a half percent of that, which comes out to 822,000 doses. The way it was split up by when it, when it was coming to us is 576,000 of those doses were Pfizer doses that would go initially to only to the hospitals. And that's where they've been going ever since then. And it was started out about 30,000 doses of Pfizer per week. Uh, per week, and then once they got to the third week, then the second doses started being shipped, so it jumped up to about 60,000 Pfizer doses to all the hospitals in the state, about 16 big ones and 20-something small ones a week. A little while later, the Moderna doses started being shipped by federal contract to Walgreens organization and CVS organization, where they would take teams to the nursing homes and long-term care facilities, and they would handle that vaccination. Now some of the vaccination as of January the 18th from the Moderna vaccine has begun to go to the pharmacies. And we have about, I think, 50 or 60 now that are operating. Out of about 600 that will be operating uh, in a, a weeks or we should just could say one week, but it'll be longer than that. But we have been assured that those doses that are coming in, and it's about 120,000 a week right now is, is the estimate, but those are coming in, that will continue until more begins to arrive. When will more begin to arrive? We think in March. We're told by Operation Warp Speed that we can expect a, a, a gradual and then dramatic increase sometime around March. Maybe the end of March, we're hoping it's the beginning of March. But the hospitals, had uh, many of them had a slow smart start uh, because uh, for several reasons wasn't because of the inability of a lot of people to use the online federal online registration to get the vaccines that has been largely worked out another there was confusion about whether the when the first doses came in on whatever day that was whether they should be halved with some with half put in arms and the rest postponed for the several weeks later when the second doses would need to be uh, administered. But that has been cleared up as well. Uh, so as uh, Mr. Clark has said, they're getting their doses in and they're getting them in the arms and it's not even taking a week mm -hmm. to run out and that's when the next shipment comes in. So that's good news and you are correct. The hospitals you mentioned, this one, are doing a, a, an excellent job. Uh, we have done a number of things as well in order to provide for more people. We've entered into an order with DHEC and the Medical Association to where retired nurses, retired doctors, medical students, and a number of others can volunteer. And they can go to the DHEC website and volunteer, but most of them are going straight to the hospitals uh, or straight to the mayors or straight to people they know and saying, I'm willing to volunteer. We just left York and they are covered up with volunteers up there. And uh, Congressman Norman had an, a vacant building with a big parking lot and they've set up operations there. So everybody is participating. The mayor was there, people, volunteers are calling, calling the mayor of Rock Hill and wanting to participate. You hear that, Mr. Mayor? So that's every, this is, we got the whole team on the field trying to get these, get these doses into the people's arms because it does no good sitting, we say sitting on the shelf, actually not on a shelf, they're in a 15 or $20,000 refrigerator each that goes down to 70 degrees Celsius uh, below zero. They got to be kept very cold until they brought out and then I think it's got five hours once they mix it up. But another thing, another asset we have is the National Guard. <clears throat> Our National Guard is probably the best in the world at logistics. 
They are deeply involved. They have been. They have uh, 43 or 44 of their medics are, are giving shots. There are about 475 of our guardsmen and women on duty right now. They're giving shots. They st uh, stood up testing facilities, testing for the virus. Now they've moved over to help with the vaccination. They are doing traffic control. They're doing administrative work. They're helping check people in. And also in some places, they're, they're cooking food and doing food banks for, for people that need it to, when they come in. Uh, right now, they're involved in seven, excuse me, nine different sites today, the National Guard assisting the other authorities and hospitals doing this work. Uh, they're at uh, Georgetown at Tidelands. They're in uh, Florence at MUSC Florence and at the Prisma, both in Greenville and in Richland. In Richland, there's a drive-in site with Prisma and the National Guard at the football stadium. Uh, let's see, the Guard and Prisma are working with USC uh, Upstate to have a site there, so they, but you can find all of that online. So the good news is we are organized, we have the assets, we've worked most of the bottlenecks out. There'll still be a few, but we, we, we've got the whole team on the field and we're moving forward and we're giving those shots as quickly as possible and getting rid of them, getting them in an arm before the next shipment comes in, which is one, one week later. Uh, but now we're moving so well that we're waiting for more and more vaccine. So what we would urge people to do is remember, we want to get these shots in your arms as quickly as possible. And we certainly want to emphasize the older population because ladies and gentlemen, those are the ones who are succumbing, going to the hospital and dying. And that's why we, uh, DHEC opened it up to 70 year olds and above uh, just uh, recently, they added them to that number one category. Those are the people who are passing away. In fact, if, if you take uh, from somewhere around in the 60s, uh, maybe mid 50s or 60s on up, something like 98 or 99% of the people who passed away fall in that category. So it's in particularly the 70 year olds and, and older that are at great risk. And now the good news is the young people uh, in deaths as of today, to my knowledge, I've heard no new, new information from one year old, from one year olds, all the way through 19 year olds, that's the school age young people, not a single death in South Carolina. And some of the uh, epidemiologists are, are saying that the, the classroom is a, is a good place for those students to be, particularly Charleston County, they said they were stunned. They had five day open class, face-to-face uh, -face classroom, and they had, had virtually uh, no, no trouble at all. So we're doing all we can. We, are, we have been assured by the warp speed people that the vaccine will be here, and we are urging those who are eligible to make your appointment, go to one of these sites, get that vaccination. Don't forget, you still have to get a, a second one. And we are, are ready for the larger shipments when they come. And we hope it'll be soon. But until then, this virus is deadly. We know we've lost thousands of people in our state, tragically. So we still have to wear those masks, keep your distance, wash your hands. If you're sick, call your doctor, go home. Y'all know what to do. We're going to have to do that for months yet to come. But the, the good news is that the vaccine is on the way and we've got the right team to be sure that the people get vaccinated.